Good morning. Happy new week to you. Today is a big day. Today is Opal update. We take her in very soon. Opal. If you don't know who Opal is, Opal is our Holland Lop Bunny. For Christmas, we got two of our girls um, Holland Lop Bunnies this year. They wanted bunnies. Bunnies are great for the garden. So these are our garden bunnies. Well, they are so sweet. We love them. I can talk more about bunnies in, an, an, in another time, but um, in what their temperament is like and everything and why I think they're so good for kids and the garden. Like I said, you'll hear me say that a lot. I mean, their poop is prolific. So, but I digress. We got these bunnies and we did not, we had both of them for about a week and um, we went out one morning and noticed that Opal broke her leg. It was very dramatic. Not, 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 we don't know how she did it. No one saw how she did it. She wasn't dropped. Somehow we think she got caught up in her crate. We really have no idea. Um, and she was super mellow. When we purchased, when we picked up Opal, she was so hyper, <laughs> lots of energy. And anyway, long, all, all that to say, long story short, it took us forever to find a vet to help us. We finally found a vet that would um, help us with her. Goodness gracious, I don't have enough hands. We finally found a vet that would help us with her and see her and give her a little bit of pain medicine. And it has just been a journey since then. So we thought two weeks ago she was gonna be good to go. She's been acting great, eating great, pooping great, all the things. And we took her in for what we thought was her last x-ray only to find out that it hadn't healed. It was showing signs of healing. The bone was trying to grow, but the bones were not aligned. So they weren't even touching. It was devastating. <sighs> because if you live on a homestead, you know what I'm getting ready to say. So the intent was to not, when you live on a homestead, let me preface this for those that don't, um, and you have animals, especially farm animals, the intent is to not see a vet for every single problem. We can't afford that. And I would dare say most homesteaders can't afford that. So you learn everything possible that you can about the animals that you have. Which I actually see as a really valuable thing. Um, but since we had had her such a short amount of time and because she was a gift, it kind of changed things. Okay, that light was really bad, so I'm gonna come back in here just for a minute here. Okay, that's better. And it's warmer in here. That was in my favorite spot. You'll see me in there all the time. Whether you're coming to visit me on here, it's just my favorite spot. Okay, so all that to say, it's been great because it's forced us to learn our animals. We've learned bunnies, we've learned chickens. We have um, barn cats. I mean, it's so silly, but we do want to take really good care of our animals. We feel like one, it's our responsibility if we're gonna have them, but we just can't afford vet bills to do every little thing. But because this bunny was a gift and because I don't know how to fix a bunny's broken leg, we decided to take it to a vet. The best option was surgery. That was not the best option for our budget for a $50 bunny. All of you animal lovers, trust me, we are animal lovers. Like if you fo if you follow us in anywhere on Instagram, people are always saying, you guys take really good care of your chickens or whatever it is. And I think people sometimes think that we're crazy, but we do, like you work so hard to get the eggs or you work so hard to get this bunny poop that you know is gonna be amazing for the garden coming up very soon, very soon, Lord willing. And, um, like you don't want it to see it go to waste with something like an injury or, you know, your chicken's getting sick. So we learn these things. And this bunny is becoming expensive. So what we are praying and hoping is that enough healing has taken place to give us hope. So we don't have to have the next conversation and the next conversation could look a few different ways. So. I'm not sure. It's very obvious, even the vet said, she's not in pain. She's not in pain right now at all. 
She, you would not know anything was wrong. I'm not even kidding. Like, not only does she seem like she's not in pain, like she's happy. She's going up on her leg. Um, I mean, it, it's wrapped quite securely this time. It has been for the past two weeks and she's been in very close, like small quarters right now, which she, you can tell she doesn't love that, but we're just trying to get it to heal. I don't even care if she hops with a limp or hops all funky. That doesn't bother us um, because we're gonna love on her. And it's just getting her to the point that we can see enough healing has taken place so we don't have to have the next conversation because going to spend $1,500 on a surgery is not in our cards. I don't know. So stay tuned today. Today is a big day for Opal. Today is we are super hopeful that enough healing has taken place. And since she is not in pain, like when, so when we took her to the vet, I'm, I'm sorry, I meant to say this a second ago. When we took her to the vet the first time she gave us pain medicine, she goes, she's flinching. She goes, bunnies have a very high pain tolerance. It's not like a human. Um, so she goes, I'm not concerned about that because she's eating, she's pooping, she's doing all the things. But, um, but she was, I can tell she is in pain. So she was on pain medicine for a little over a week and that seemed to help. She is not, she is, it's very obvious. She's very happy. <laughs> there is definite, there's definite difference in animal behavior when they're in pain and not. And the amazing thing is that we got to learn bunnies so well. We do know the ins and outs of bunnies, whether we wanted to or not. We know normal bunny behavior. We know temperament. We know what they love to eat. We know the snack that they love. We know how they like to be held, how they don't like to be held. We know all the, like things to look for. We know that their bones are more brittle. I mean, we, the list could go on and on. So in so many ways, it's been a mixed blessing. We're, we're just hoping that we can get past the point that the enough healing has taken place so we can move forward. So we will see. Stay tuned. A lot will be shown today. I'm nervous. Okay, we are getting ready to head to go take Opal. I got a crew with me. What are we hoping for today? That Sis? her leg is healed. That her leg is healed. I'm nervous. This has been a long road. And yes, hope and pray. We are hoping and praying for that. So we're taking her. We'll get an update from her. Hopefully not have to have any hard or ha hard discussions. And then I, if all goes well, we're gonna head to the garden center for a little project that we're working on. So stay tuned about that. But today we are really, really hoping for good news about Miss Opal. These are her close quarters she's had lately. Hey, Miss Opal. And we have been kind of making it bigger yeah. for her. We did make it a little bit bigger. Yes, let's hope it feels better. See how it's all wrapped around. Here we go, lovely. How you feeling? How you feeling? Are you nervous? I gotta be honest, I'm a bit nervous. Are you nervous? I'm, Are you I'm guys nervous? nervous? Too. You're nervous I mean, too. It's not really your bunny, so you yeah. don't really care, probably do you? <laughs> not as much. Yes, thank you, Shad, for that. I don't know if you can see her at all, but she just keeps poking her head up like, guys, I'm free, I'm free. <sighs> Sweet girl. Okay, update, here we are. Do you wanna give the update? No. no. They did the last x-ray. The bone is healing. It is healing. Not how we want. But at this point, the doctor said, I don't think the splint is going to help anymore. The encouraging, and, and that's okay. She goes, she might just always drag it. She said the encouraging part is she goes, I don't think she's in any discomfort. That's what we'll always be watching for. Um, she doesn't appear to be in any discomfort at all. She seems happy. She looked, she just started licking her leg um, as soon as they took the bandage off. Those are all really great things. So she acts fine. The one sad part, I thought this was sad. I'm sure you did too. We don't think we're gonna be able to breed her. The doctor was afraid that it might put too much stress on her and we don't want to do that. That's just not worth it. Um, you know, our goal is to have a few more bunnies. 
and we will find another bunny at some point in time. But in the meantime, we will love on this bunny. She's going to be our garden bunny. I have a feeling, don't you think, Willow? I have a feeling we will always be a little extra close to Opal. Yeah, probably. I think so, because she trusts us completely. Just the mix, go ahead. More of like a pet. Definitely, she's definitely, I can envision her just loving I mean, I'll, summertime. And, and Gus is a pet too, but like. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, she does. She always will trust us because she's had to. The mixed blessing in all of this is that. Um, okay, sorry. The mixed blessing in all of this is that um, she does trust us, and so for that, I'm thankful. I, I definitely wish there was more healing, and we're going to keep our eye on it. If at any point in time we see it getting worse or her starting to gnaw on it, which I know can be a bunny thing, um, or if she were to be in discomfort, then we will go back to the drawing board of what our options are, which are limited. So that's the update so far of Miss Opal. Okay, so we're back home. Can you get into the shade a little bit? We're trying to find this sunshine feels so good, but uh, it makes it a little bit challenging for filming out here. Um, we're back home. We gave a teeny tiny update in the van on the on the way home of Opal. Um, just trying to watch her right now and see. We're not giving her free reign of movement yet. We're gonna give her a couple days. Um, the vet suggested taking until Wednesday or Thursday to give her a few days to adjust without having her splint on. And we're gonna still keep her in those um, smaller living quarters just for a few days too. So, and she she assured us, she goes, she's not in any discomfort right now at all. She goes, it's very different than when you first brought her in, which was almost six weeks. So it means we've had her for almost eight, no, no, no. We've had her for almost seven weeks because this ha her injury we think happened about six weeks ago, right? And we had had her for a week. Yes, yes, yeah. okay. So I had a couple thoughts, not to make a bunny more profound than what it needs to be. Well, she's had it on for five and a half weeks. Yeah, she's had the she's had the splint on for about five and a half, but it happened a couple days before then. So about anyway. Six. Yeah. So here's my thoughts about this sweet little bunny. Our journey out here to getting to this place and just even out in the country and whatnot it was a long journey. And there's times that I found myself frustrated right after we realized she had a pretty significant injury that like it just didn't go according to plan. And I've shared a little bit about this in Instagram and just even with some close friends of mine face to face saying it is hard when things don't, when you work so hard for something that it just doesn't go as planned. But what we have quickly learned in our time with animals out here is that I think that's the nature of this lifestyle. And not, I don't, I don't think, I know. I know it's the nature of this lifestyle. A dear friend of ours who has much larger animals or did have much larger, larger animals said, where there is livestock, there is dead stock. And somebody else shared that with her. I've heard that other farmers say that as well. And it's true. And we, while we still only have small ones, um, chickens, ducks, cats, dog, bunnies, you know, this spring that will change and we are adding um, larger, if all, if all goes as planned, we will be large, adding some larger ones. And I think it's an, a reminder that I needed that it's okay if it doesn't, if all doesn't go as planned, right? And that there's a lot to be learned even when all doesn't go as planned. And I think that's just a really good lesson for life. And you can get frustrated at the ups and downs and the heartbreak and the frustration and that really has nothing to do with where you live it's just how life happens um but god's with us in all of it and we literally have learned more about bunnies again because of this sweet little this sweet little one and her injury than what we would have learned any other way, I think. So for that, we're thankful. But I'm glad that we have her. Are you glad? Mm -hmm. 
we, we were teasing on the way home, maybe I said this in, a, in an earlier clip, well she'll probably end up truly being our garden bunny in that she's just always going to be around us. Um, the vet doesn't anticipate her making a full recovery while she, where she will be as she was before. And so my guess is she will live with us often in our downstairs, well it's a downstairs sunroom where that we will be turning into stay tuned we will be turning it into a greenhouse so i'm looking forward to that my whole point of saying all of this it, it's become a bit cliche is that it is about the journey and sometimes god is gracious enough to send us a fuzzy furry adorable little bunny or whatever to remind us that the journey is worth it with all of its ups and downs and there's always something to be learned I tell my kids all the time, never stop learning. My number one goal with their education is that they never stop learning. And I think that we've been on a major learning curve with this sweet one. For all of those that have been on this journey with us, with Miss Opal for the last six to eight weeks, thank you. She is on the mend, Lord willing, and hopefully you will see many fuzzy, furry, happy days with her to come. So. Thank you for joining us and until next time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, until next time. <laughs>